All right, welcome back. This is our second lesson in the um, Basics of Premiere Pro uh, series. Um, what we're looking at here is the document we were using in lesson one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this like we should have done a while ago, which brings a good point. Um, by default, Premiere Pro has an auto save function and that will allow you to um, recover previously saved version or auto saved version in case the program crashes or something um, and you can set the span uh, in which it uh, or the time between each auto saves and the uh, program preferences which we'll look at a little bit later uh, right now I believe it's set it up every 20 minutes it will auto save so you might see that auto save box come up here in a few. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this project as something else. And I'm going to call it 2. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and change this um, sequence here's name. And I can do that simply by clicking on the name. I'm going to make it lesson 2. And what I want to focus on next is some of the um, items you can add to your Premiere Pro project. So if we click down here on new item, uh, we can add a sequence which we've already done. We can add an offline file, which I'll get into that later. We can add a title, which is a uh, um, an object that's going to allow us to write some text and some other objects and overlay it on top of our video. Bars and tone. This is the uh, the color bars and the tone used for broadcast and such. Black video. This would just be a black video clip if you needed to have any black in there. And then there's color mat, universal counting later, and transparent video, which we'll get into some of those a little bit later too. Um, the first one we're going to look at, let's just go with the title here. It's going to bring this up here. We're going to want the, uh, the dimensions to stay the same because of the dimensions of our project. And this should all stay the same. And we're going to name this. video title and say okay. And it's going to bring up this uh, dialog box here and it's going to show a preview of um, our video at the moment where we're at on the playhead here. And if I change the playhead it'll put us in different spots. So I'm going to leave it right here. And we've got a little assortment here of tools that are um, probably more reminiscent of Illustrator than Photoshop. Let's go with the text tool here and let's just click. And it's going to allow us to make some text. And the font that I have selected is a little obnoxious. Um, so let's come over here and change the font and it's going to give us a small preview of the fonts down here. I'll just pick something uh, kind of generic. Go with Arial. And we'll change the font style to black. And we can change the font size here. Or we can come over here and click on the corner and drag. I'm going to hold down Shift to keep my proportions. And then let's move the uh, title over here. Now we could come down here these title styles and choose one. Um, and it'll give some uh, effects to our font. Now the thing to note is that it will change your font uh, family as well. So we're going to lose our Arial black if I click on one of these. Let's go with just this one. It's got a subtle drop shadow. Which you can see if I put it over a lighter object. Um, these effects can be edited down here. Here's your fill and your stroke. So if we wanted to add a stroke, an outer stroke, we can do so. And we can change the size of it here. And there's the shadow. Um, and you can you can mess with these uh, however you'd like. Um, we also have tools here like shapes and such. Um, 
I don't really have a use for a shape right now. Although, I guess what we could do, we could make a kind of a bar that goes across. It's taking the properties that we had set for this. So that's why these things are huge here. So let's come over here to our stroke here. Turn that down. In fact, let's just turn it off. And let's turn off our shadow. And we're also going to make the fill color black. And we're going to move this down. Our font here, or our text here. And if I bring it under here, you're going to see that it's, it's under the uh, um, shape. And that's not what we want. So let's right click on here. And go to our range. And bring to front. And now we can put it on top. Now, one thing I want to note is if you're going to be doing anything really uh, intense as far as uh, titles and things like that, and you want it to look really good, I I'd recommend doing this stuff in After Effects. Um, this is good for quick titles like this, or um, subtitles, or, or some other stuff, but uh, if you're going to do something really um, spectacular, I'd, I'd do it in After Effects. But anyways, let's just go with this for now. You can, you know, mess with these tools on your own. So let's go ahead and close this. And we have our video title. And we can click and drag this onto our timeline. Let's put it on video too. So now if we put our playhead here, you'll see uh, my cool video. Premiere will give you uh, a generic um, default length. And you can trim it. At, at your will. We can also come over here to transitions and let's choose a slide. Let's just get slide here and we'll drag it on here. And this is going to go ahead and slide it off like such. Alright, the next thing I want to show you we can create a sequence out of this here. If we want to go ahead and hold down shift and click all of our clips here and right click, we can choose nest. And what this will do is it's going to create a new sequence with all these clips in it and then place that sequence inside of this sequence. So let's choose nest. And there you go. And if we want to go back and edit that sequence, we can come over to nested sequence over here, double click on it, and it's going to load the nested sequence. So what that also showed is that you can you can make a sequence and then drag a sequence into a timeline. So you can put um, as many sequences inside of a sequence as you like. You just cannot put the same sequence inside. And this could be good if you got into something and, and there's just a lot going on and you wanted to kind of clean up your sequence. Uh, this kind of helps. Then you can just come back into nested sequence one here and make any changes you want. I want to come up here to the program window and I want to turn on the safe margins here. And what these are is the title and action safe lines. And when working with TV, you want to kind of keep anything that's important action wise. And what we mean by that is you know, if the dog's face was over here and we really wanted that, that's part that's important to the video, uh, we want it, we wouldn't want it over here. We'd want to keep it past this line or inside of this line, this first line. And that's because TVs display things in various different ways, especially the old uh, TVs. So just to be safe, we keep it inside this line. And even more so, if we've got a title or something that is definitely important to see, we keep it inside this inner line. So we can turn that on and off at will. Um, right here we have the quality of the output to the monitor here. We can turn on alpha, which at this point there's no alpha channel, so it's just going to be white. We can also change the quality that's previewed. We can say highest quality. Or we can say automatic, which uh, Premiere will try to kind of figure out your your performance of your computer at the moment. and and play back accordingly. We also have our shuttle bar here, 
which allows us to go through the video at the rate that we would like. So the farther over we go, the faster it goes. And then we have our jog wheel here. All right, and the last thing I want to show you in this this lesson is uh, let's go to our video effects and let's do color correction and we'll do change color. We'll drag this onto our clip and then our our effects controls here it's going to allow us to change the properties and what this uh, effect does is it allows us to change a color in here to a different color so let's use our eyedropper here we'll click this and we can come over here and find the color we want to change and we'll click uh, lilies um, kind of red orange area here and let's go ahead and start changing the color. Now you'll notice it's changing a lot of the color because her her color here is very similar to the wood and, and floor and such. We can change our tolerance down and then I'll get rid of some of it. And we can change the saturation. We can bring that up. We can bring it down to almost a gray scale here. And we can soften up the uh, tolerance. Um, this isn't a very pertinent uh, effect. I just wanted to show you an effect. Um, but once you start adding effects, you're going to uh, definitely change the uh, playback uh, quality. So if we hit spacebar to playback, it's going to jump around. And that can be fine, but if you really need to see what it looks like and and full speed there. We need to do what's called a render and you'll see this gray bar here above the timeline. This is considered our work area. And if we grab this handle here and drag it over um, we can and then we can pull this middle here. We can define our work area and if we want to see this in real time or as close to real time as you can get depending on how uh, good your computer is um, we can hit enter and what it's going to do is it's going to render that effect so that it's not applying it to the uh, clip anymore it is the clip and then it's going to automatically play back and you'll see it's very smooth now and uh, although I have no idea how smooth it is going to be on our recording so if it's still choppy uh, just take my word for it or do it yourself um, something else to, to note here is that now you see this red bar here turned green and what that green means is that this area of the uh, sequence has been rendered and if I take something like uh, our title here and drag it on to the timeline this area is going to turn red because uh, it's changed the, uh, the output so um, it needs to re-render with this uh, My Cool Video title on top of it. 